This world that we live in is filled with amazing everyday things that enrich and enhance our lives. Most of these things are within all of our reach every day, but we seldom stop to even take notice of them. We have great books to feed our minds. We have music and celebrations to feed our spirits. We have all varieties of food and drink to feed our bodies. And we have faith, family, and tradition to feed our souls. But along with these common gifts are other, rarer gifts that few people ever get to experience. One of them is the opportunity to experience nature in a true wilderness setting. To venture into and be present in a place unspoiled by the hand of man. The other is having a friendship that lasts a lifetime. I consider myself to be among the luckiest of all men to have experienced both. This is my friend Jonathan. We've been fishing together for more than 20 years. During that time, we've been to a lot of awesome places and we have caught some awesome fish. Yep. And even though our lives have taken us in different directions and separated us by more than 2,400 miles, it's our crazy, fanatical, outrageous passion for fly fishing that keeps getting us back together. When we get together, our philosophy is this. You can eat when you get home, and you can sleep when you're dead, but you only have a short time to catch fish. Our idea of getting a bite to eat is stopping long enough at a stop sign to open the cooler and grab a handful of lunch meat and a beer. We're like a 40 pound Jack Cravel on an 11 weight fly rod. We never, never, never quit. So when I called him up and asked him if he wanted to pack into the wilderness area in Idaho, he was on a plane faster than a PBR disappears at a NASCAR race. And so begins another adventure. Excellent! This adventure actually begins a year earlier, when my wife Janine and I spent 11 days exploring North Idaho. She took one look at this wilderness area and said, you have got to get Jonathan out here. He and I are both very lucky to have wives who not only understand, but support our addiction. So as soon as Jonathan said he was on his way, Janine commenced doing what she does best. Packing, planning, and preparing things for us to make our trip one that we would never forget. Yeah, after she's doing all the work for us, huh? I know. <clears throat> I like it. So on, the, on this trip, Janine is the, she's the executive in charge of, wait, 
<laughs> what did I say? <laughs> um, what did I say? Something. I <laughs> oh, yeah. So Jan on this fishing trip, Janine is the executive director in charge of logistics and planning. And by that, he means I'm the king. You're not the king. I'm the king. You're, 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 you're a the female. Queen and I'm the king. No, you're the female. I like that makes a gold you the crown. queen. And by I'm the king elimination, that makes me the king. So I have been moved up to the king position. <laughs> She's just a logistics manager. Oh, uh, if there's water. room, in, if there's room in the cooler, we'll put it in the cooler. We'll put it in the cab. <laughs> Whatever you say, babe. Before heading into the backcountry, we decided to take my 1967 Keith Steel drift boat down the St. Joe River near Avery, Idaho for a day of float fishing. All right, here's day one of our camping trip on the St. Joe. Got a beautiful spot right on the bank of the North Fork of the St. Joe. I just I only brought the essentials. So bathing suit and it should be good. The two B's. The bathing two B's suit and booze. I got JP up in the bow of the boat here. He's snagging fish. This is our um first first morning. Fished yesterday afternoon, um just wade fishing and did pretty good. Jonathan caught a big old cutthroat oh there he's oh. got oh dude he just doesn't want these fish too bad though because they keep eating this fly and he's like it's all about the take for jonathan he does he's caught so many fish in his life that he doesn't need to bring them to the boat he just gets the pleasure of seeing them rise it's all taylor swift to me yeah. you just shake it off <laughs> so another news got a little bit of a leak in the boat here just enough to keep a little a little moisture to keep you cooled off during the day. Got a 50 year old boat that can't keep the water out. 50 year old thermos that can't keep the coffee in. So that, that's about par for the course for me. Oh, just had a look. Yeah, I saw that. that oh, right there. yeah, that's where he was, right? Yes! Yes! Oh! That was a good fish. Ah. I've been giving Jonathan a hard time because he's slinging stimmies here and he's not hooking up. He's had so many hits. So I was like, well, let me, let me grab that. Let me show you how it's done. Who provided the fly? I get like 11 hits, cannot hook up. It's like, what is going on with us today? There's the problem. We're fishing a conservation fly. <laughs> There's no actual hook on the thing. Pretty decent little cutty. Yes. <laughs> He's got a mouthful of stone fly, man. Not ugly at all. Nice. Yeah. Oh, look at the yellow on his lips. Oh, man. Yeah. Man, look at the yellow on his lips. Oh, gosh, it's so pretty.
bad as it be. Look at that pink belly. Mm. So I was just noticing we've got three nets in the boat and it, as strange as that might seem, it makes total sense because if you're running a hopper and dropper, one guy's got a hopper and dropper going and the other guy's got a single fly, it is possible that you could get three fish at one time. So you're going to need three nets because they're obviously all going to be big. Don't make it out of here. Don't come looking for us. It is day two and a half of mine and Jonathan's adventure. Had a big thunderstorm this morning, some rain. We're on, on a nice little road here, headed up to our final spot where we'll park the truck for a few days. And uh, this will be the end of the road, and then we're going to be parking and hiking into the free wilderness area. So here we go. All right, here we are at the trailhead. We're loaded up here. Um, Carl is going for uh, ultralight, and um, I, I've kind of got essentially the RV of backpacks. You basically just throw it all in there and uh, hope your truck is large enough to tow it. All right, hitting the trail. Ran into a couple of hikers coming out who said fishing was really, really great. So hopefully that's true. And their standards for really, really great are the same standards that we have for really, really great. But we'll see. Heck, the, the walk alone is worth the trip. Just absolutely beautiful out here. Starting to set on the river.
bites. There he is. Oh, that's a good fish. Oh, shucks. He was a big one. He's taking deep breaths. Count to ten. And Cappy bites. Another nice fish, just right here in this little bitty run. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. Is this match in the hatch or what? I don't know. This is the rubber legged foam foam body fly hat. And he hit it on the first cast. First year, first cast. Try and get grip, but it don't make sense. Cause you can lose life on this fast route. Turn thoughts to a cash cow. I might flip that to the glass house. I don't need the accolades. I'm in love with the chase. I just want to eat some Oh, I've got a big picture. some awesome fish some big fish I think I've hooked up probably with my biggest fish of the day uh, here now so uh, see if I can do this if I can it might break my line though <laughs> but I'm not sure how you thought you were gonna get that in your <laughs> Jonathan's got a big one on down here. Let's go see what he's got. He's fighting like a madman. Oh, yes. Woo! Swim into that net, baby. Set the hook, and then you just feel the whoa, 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 <laughs> that you see that flash oh, come man. out from under there, and 
he knocked my bobber off and everything. <laughs> I, I saw your bobber come yeah, down the river. In fact, in fact I, I turned He's Beep. Nice. His name, that guy's name is Beep. Okay. I, I, I like turned so he didn't notice it. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask you, did you see my bobber? I did. So let me show you this. I mean, I'm sure uh, it was our biggest fish that we caught. You know, get it to turn right for the day. But he was up underneath that stinking log. I mean, just a stud. <laughs> Any action on the uh, dry fly? Yes. It was. It was like it was prescribed. All right. You just take the big stimulator and you run it right along an undercut bank. Fish. Three slabs, this two more in the span of 10 minutes, something like that. You find an undercut bank where the water was pushing to it, put the stimulator right up next to it, and it will stimulate all the way down through. I'll follow me gold. Well, we were all loaded up and heading down the road. We got the boat in tow, rocking our way back down to Avery from Spruce Tree and our camping area, you know, got out of the woods and everything. And <laughs> the only road leading back to Avery is closed. Um, that lightning storm that we got into that day yeah. caused some wildfires, yeah. and the wildfires caused a rock slide. <laughs> so it has some alternate alternate routes. routes. We'll have to. All right. Well, guess we got to head a different way. Yep. During that whole time that we were camping and fly fishing, there were wildfires blazing all around us which caused landslides and road closures, forcing us to take a 12-hour detour home. A detour that would lead us into Montana, back into Idaho, Washington, Oregon, and finally back into Idaho again. But all of those extra hours in the car didn't cause us one bit of discouragement. Instead, it gave us an opportunity to not only reflect on this adventure, but to look forward to the next adventure and another 23 years of friendship and fly fishing.